Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So in today's video, I'm very excited. I'm going to be bringing you DDR5 versus DDR4, the ultimate showdown. DDR4 4133, Samsung B-Dive, fully tuned, gear one, the works, versus DDR5 7600, which isn't the best, but DDR5 is much harder to work with. But anyways, DDR5 7600, which is close to the top, fully tuned, uh, yeah, it's definitely very interesting, and over the past day or so, even after I've done the video, as I did this live, uh, which, by the way, if you're not subscribed, I do my videos now live with you guys, but they have to be unlisted for YouTube, so if you didn't see it, you'll be seeing uh, everything here. But uh, anyways, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, or if you want to join, hit the little join button down below, or become a Patreon member, and you can see the full unedited thing. But anyways, this is a very... Very interesting video because the cost is so high on DDR5 to get this level of performance. But once you see the level of performance, you kind of can't unsee it. So anyways, that's enough out of me. Let's go ahead and just dive right on in. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the parts used. I'm going to go ahead and then we'll do the slides. And I'll talk over it. Um, but yeah, so let me do the thing and uh, we'll get started. All right, so kicking things off with the parts, I'm just using uh, Amazon over here. Go ahead and show you. For the main video, I'll be using B-Roll. So anyways, uh, for the CPU, we're going with the Core i9-13900K. This is obviously 8-core, 16-thread, and then you have the 16 E-cores, which don't discount these if you do any sort of work. Th this is a massive, massive increase uh, in performance for like video editing and stuff. Like it definitely does stuff. So there's value to be had there. But the one that we're using is just eight core, 16 thread, eight cores disabled. Cause I only use windows 10 for gaming and I wanted to get the best performance out of this. So we're going ahead. Mine's running at 5.7 gigahertz, all core five gigahertz on the ring clock, 1.34 volts. And this is on both systems doing the exact same thing. All right, so we got our CPU, and then for the DDR4 board, I'm using the Gigabyte Z690i Aorus Ultra Lite, uh, which they're sold out of now. So if you didn't get one from the last video, last week's recommendations, you're kind of stuck with this one. This is the best DDR4 motherboard for LGA 1700. This is about double the price of what they were last week. So they're getting pretty expensive. So. For testing, I use the Patriot Viper Steel Series DDR4 uh, 4400 16 gig kit. Reason why I went with this, this is the fastest DDR4 that I own. Um, and with this one, I was able to get the 13900K up to 4266 with that motherboard, perfectly stable, but it would only run at 5.6 gigahertz. So I opted for 5.7 and ran this at 4133. Now, if you're like, hey, I want to go ahead and get more than 16 gigs of RAM and you're recommending a two dim board. Fair. Um, this would be the RAM to buy. So if I were to get a different 32 gigabyte kit, right now I would go with the G-Skill uh, DDR4 4000. This is a C16 kit. In reality, it should just perform about the same. So the reason why I'd spend the little bit extra is if you're trying to get over four gigahertz, now, if you're not using a two dim board, like the ITX board that I showed you, you're using something like an MSI A Pro, you don't need to go this high. Go with something like the uh, HP V10s or the, uh, was it Team Create DDR4s? Uh, those ones are a little bit cheaper, DDR4 3600 B die kits, and then just get up to 4000. Basically 3800 plus, and you're doing just fine on DDR4. Uh, but if you're pushing for the max, spend a little bit extra. This will just make your life a little bit easier because, well, it'll do the job. All right, now for the DDR5 setup, I'm using the MSI MPG Z790i Edge Wi-Fi Gaming. Now, the reason why I went with this, I explained the other day, this is a 12 layer PCB. The only other boards that are going to be anywhere near as good for memory overclocking on DDR5 are more expensive. So this was the cheapest option. Uh, so I went with this guy right here and yeah, it did pretty well. I forgot to pull it up. Uh, I went ahead and paired it with the, uh, Kingston Fury Renegade. They don't even have it on Amazon yet. You can only buy it from their website and they're sold out. It's a uh, DDR5 7200. I also used a G skill kit as well. This guy right here, the, uh, G skill Trident Z 7200s. 
Uh, this one's C34, the other one, the Kingston was C38. Doesn't really matter, it's the same memory. Um, I ended up getting it to run at 7600 C34, and the latencies on those, let me pull that up for you guys. Uh, so right there, as you can see here, we have basically doubled the memory bandwidth at 116 gigabytes per second. And then we're coming in at 45.6 nanoseconds. Obviously this will fluctuate, so about 45. Not quite as low as the DDR4 because I couldn't push higher than 7600. I believe this is likely due to the fact that the board that I got wasn't the best one. It actually ended up having issues and I'm sending it back uh, later on. So just a few days ago, it started exhibiting a few quirks. So, you know, your mileage may vary. There's definitely binning when it comes to motherboards as well. Mine wasn't the best model. I know you can get up and over 7600 with this particular board. Now, if you wanted to and you want the best and you're like, hey, I want 8000 plus and I don't want to hear anything about 7600 anymore. Well, this is what you need. Nine hundred and six dollars. They're six ninety nine MSRP. But like I said, they're being scalped because people said that they're cheaper. This guy right here is the only motherboard that I'm aware of that is rated at the eight thousand plus DDR5 kits. So, yeah, that's why I went with the ITX board, because that's crazy. But if you're just saying the hell with it, I want the absolute best. There you go. Links are in the description down below. I also have the EVGA Dark down there, which should be about as good as the uh, MPG that I showed you guys. Um, you can also go ahead if you want to. If you're saying the hell with it, I'm just buying the best. DDR5 7600 right now. This is the best. So as you guys can see, prices get astronomically more expensive when we start looking at DDR5 stuff. Uh, for storage, I use PCIe 4.0 uh, NVMEs. I used the two terabyte GM7000, the Acer Predator, and the Kingston Fury Renegade. They both sent these over. These are basically like the two best drives uh, for PCIe Gen 4. So until you get to Gen 5 drives, these guys are pretty much top of the line since we're testing everything else top of the line. And then, of course, for the graphics card, I'm using the Gigabyte RTX 4090. Mine doesn't have the little LEDs inside of it. Uh, or if it does, they don't turn on. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. It's the same exact thing. Mine is running at a max speed of 3165. And on the lower side, it's running at 2950. So ray traced games and that sort of stuff is a little heavier. It's going to run closer to the 2950. Non-ray traced games will run well over three gigahertz. So we were pushing this bad boy pretty hard. Kicking things off with Cyberpunk 2077. This is with the max preset Ultra RT. Basically, all games have all settings set to its maximums. Uh, all right. So as you can see here, DDR4 is actually a pretty good gap there at 1080p. So going from 96 FPS up to 107 on the 1% lows. And then once you hit 1440p, that shrinks up a bit, 68 to 72. And then obviously there's no difference at 4K. So yeah, there's a bit of a gap there for sure in this particular title. All right, going on over to uh, Gotham Knights. This is max preset with ray tracing. This is the exact opposite. 71 FPS, 72 FPS at 1080p. No difference between DDR4 and DDR5. Uh, 66 and 69. This is just test to test variation, margin of error. Uh, and then same thing at uh, 4K. So there is a slight gap at every resolution, but more than likely, this is just variations from run to run. So you can see on the averages, sometimes they're a little bit lower. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, next up, God of War, ultra preset. There's no ray tracing on this game. So DDR4, 1080p, 175, DDR5, 172. Once again, run to run variation. 152, 152 at 1440p, it's the same, 129, 130. So zero difference in this particular game. Next we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 uh, with the extreme preset. We have uh, 169 on DDR4, goes up to 179 on DDR5. So there's a little bit in it there, but you know, not huge. Uh, then we have 131 and 134 on the 1440p numbers between DDR4 and 5. Still in favor of DDR5. And then, of course, we have uh, at 4K, basically the same, 77 to 79. So once again, a couple frames, not a whole lot there. All right, next up, we have uh, Plague Tale Requiem. And at 1080p, we can see 144 on the DDR4, beating out the DDR5 at 142. Once again, it's just run-to-run -run variation. 
Same thing at 1440p, going from 118 to 119. And then on the uh, 4K numbers, we have 73 and 74. So it's the same thing. All right, so Spider-Man, this is the one that we know for a fact likes the extra memory bandwidth. Uh, so down here at 1080p, you can see 89 goes up to 101. That is a sizable increase. So yeah, there's definitely a thing there. And as you can see at 1440p, we are identically CPU bottlenecked because we're getting the exact same numbers. That's the beauty of a 4090, the thing is so strong. Anyways, 85 FPS to 101, it's the same thing. Uh, and then even at 4K, we have 76 up to 87. All right, so a lot of people will point to this and go, Chris, that's a big deal. And I'm not saying that this isn't. However, this is definitely an edge case as we've seen so far, but let's continue. And then stuff like this happens. So down here at 1080p, the DDR4 version comes in at 228 FPS on average against 202 on the DDR5. So DDR5 is actually slower here. And the only way this makes any sort of logical sense is partly run-to-run -run variation and the lower latency might actually be more beneficial in this game. Uh, at 1440p, we're just basically run-to-run -run variations again and same thing at 4K. So they're basically tied at those two resolutions. All right, next up is uh, Total War Warhammer 3 Ultra Preset. It's a little bit in it here at 1080p, DDR4 at 145, and then you have DDR5 at 154. Okay, it's a little bit of gain. Same gain we're seeing over on 1440p, 107 up to 117. Once again, there's a little bit of a difference there. And then same gap at 4K, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so we have 72 FPS up to 82. So it's basically 10 frames at every resolution, which I found strange that it would scale like this. But here we are. All right, now, this one, The Witcher 3, this is using the next-gen stuff. I used Ultra Preset, but no ray tracing. The GeForce driver was just not cooperating. Basically, the frame times were a complete shit show. So I could not use the ray tracing here. Maybe in the future we'll double check, but there's a big enough gap that we're seeing on this particular game. So 13900K with DDR4 coming in at 91 FPS. That goes up to 109 on the DDR5 at 1080p. 1440p, exactly the same thing because we're still CPU, memory, whatever. We're not GPU bound at 1440p, same exact numbers. And then even at 4K, it's basically the same limitations in the system. We drop down to 88 on the DDR4 and that's at 105 on the DDR5. All right, so for the last game tested, I had to do it, I had to do it. It's got ray tracing. This is the only game that is not released in 2022, but Crisis Remastered with Can It Run Crisis uh, preset with all the ray tracing also at Can It Run Crisis levels. Well, yeah, they could both run Crisis. So uh, DDR4 coming in at 1080p, 73 FPS on the 1% low, and then 77 on the DDR5. So little bit of a difference there, not a whole lot. Um, and then at 1440p, you have 74 and 73, so they're the same. And then 4K, 72 and 74. So yeah, once again, you can see that this is clearly a CPU bottleneck. Definitely not a memory bottleneck, but this is definitely a CPU, likely single thread bottleneck, as even at 4K, you're getting the same frame rate. Now let's take a look at the 10 game average, 1% uh, lows. Now, the main reason why I only focus on 1% lows here is because the average frame rate really doesn't matter. Imagine if you had 85 FPS as your 1% low and 800 FPS on your average. That is actually terrible. Which one of those two numbers actually matters? Not the average. So we just throw those out here on this channel because they don't matter. Um, but if you wanted to, they're all included in there. You can average them up yourself. So starting with 1080p. So we have the DDR4 13900K coming in at 128 FPS on average overall. And then we have the DDR5 coming in at 132. So that's a four FPS difference overall. Uh, and then we have 110 FPS for DDR4 at 1440p up to 115, five FPS overall. And then at 4K, you have 81 for DDR4. That goes up to 85 for DDR5, another four. So four, four, five, you guys can math that out. That's 4.3% gain over, or 4.3 FPS gain overall. Uh, I actually did the math, obviously, since it's basically the same frame rate gain at each one, the lower number, so at 4K, the gain is actually higher. It's about 5% increase over here. And then at 1080p, it comes out to being about a 3%. So three, four, five 5% gains. That, that's what we're looking at. So 
that's probably information that uh, you weren't expecting. Now, obviously, DDR5 goes ahead and it, it's a big deal under certain circumstances, right? So some games really like it. Typically, the games with ray tracing and things like that, they seem to do better. But even some games with ray tracing don't. And most of the games, the performance difference isn't really that big. And even when there is a win, it's what, 10 FPS? Sometimes it was like 15. That was a kind of the edge case, but usually 5, 10 FPS higher when the DDR5 is superior. And when we look at all the costs associated with going with proper DDR5 platforms, you're looking at significantly more money. So just to put things in perspective, let me do a little bit of math here. So j just for RAM, if you just want to get into the system for memory and uh, motherboard for DDR4, you can get $100 RAM and you can get, well, they were $150, but those motherboards are gone. So it might be more expensive now. Um, but you can still get something like uh, an MSI A Pro or the uh, Z690 Steel Legend like I have, and those will still do about the same. But anyways, your starting price point for everything besides the CPU is $250. You're like, hey, Chris, but I want 32 gigs of RAM. Fair. All right, so 200 plus 150, $350. Okay, starting point for DDR5, just the motherboard, $360. So we're already over DDR4 with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, and then let's say you throw on $300 for the RAM. Now you're at $660. So yeah, $250 to $350 base price versus $660 base price. And it goes up from there because you can't even afford an Asus Apex for $660. So, yeah, it's one of those sort of things where it's up to you guys to decide what makes the most sense for you. Forget the future proofing argument, because in the future, you could buy better DDR5 for much less money. You could buy, hopefully, there'll be cheaper good DDR5 motherboards available as well. So in the future, it would make more sense to, to buy that, in my opinion. Now, if you're sitting there with an RTX 4090, you're sitting there with a custom water loop, you've got a 13900K, and you want the absolute best, I say it makes sense for that person. For that person that's not looking for value, they're just straight up looking for performance, DDR5 is faster. There's really no questioning in that. And if you go ahead and get something like the Asus Apex or you know one of the other motherboards, the EVGA Dark, buy the more expensive RAM, and get that over 8,000, it will never lose because the latency will be as good, if not better, than what you have on DDR4, plus you have all that memory bandwidth. So of course DDR5 is going to be better. You just have to throw value just way out the window. For most of you guys, if you're looking at a 13600K, 13700K, DDR4 still just makes the most sense. And if you're looking at AMD, you're gonna want a 7800X3D. It's gonna beat the pants off of all the stock generic vanilla Zen 4s, and the RAM doesn't matter. You just buy some DDR5 5600 stuff. We looked it up last week. They're like 120 bucks. So you just do that for AMD, and then you're done. And for Intel, right now, the smart move is just go with DDR4 for the vast majority of you guys. But if you want the best, DDR5 is the best. It's just not the best value. It's the only thing where it loses. Obviously, the fastest thing is never the best value. It's just a pretty steep price point for a lot of people. So those are my thoughts on the whole situation. I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, luckily, I am doing this live, so I can chat with you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little snippet from my live stream. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell down below. And you can join me every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be the standard time for the live streams. And then the videos will come a few days later. So you can go ahead and do that. Or if you want to see the full unedited version and help support the channel, please consider clicking the join button down below or becoming a Patreon member with the link in the video description. And if you're interested in picking any of this stuff up, you can also help support the channel by using the affiliate links down below. Well, thank you so much. That's all I have for you here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.